Hey guys, uh, in this tutorial, I'm going now to show you how you can add data to the to the contacts database, and you can remember the contacts DB. Uh, we, data, we created that database, and we in the next tutorial, in the second tutorial, we created a table. So I showed you how you can give a connection to an embedded database, and we created a database contact DB. So uh, now we had created something simpler, but we didn't we didn't uh, check. Uh, the, the interface so now let us come to the fxml file and uh, we will open it so we want to open it uh, in the same builder so that you can so uh, while it opens in the same builder we will be creating now uh, a simple interface and uh, a simple backend to show you how we can do these connections now quite well. Now, first of all, we will delete this button on the label. So select the button on the label and click the delete button because we don't need it. Now, come and select this and copy. Increase the font size, uh, this the size. Now that you've done that, select the click here V box. Put it in the archive, uh, then right click it, feed it to the parent, and then next thing you need is a text field. So, uh, the next thing you need is a text field, and we will be placing three text fields one that will hold the name, the second one will hold the residence, and the third one the phone number, according to the database that we had, uh, that, uh, the table we had created. So, uh, drop this text, the first text field in the video, then right click this text field and duplicate it so we want three called three text fields duplicate it and then we need also an h box uh, to hold two buttons one that will be adding data to the database and then one that will be clearing the text fields so uh, let us add that and then type in here button because we want two buttons so in these two buttons uh, uh, so let us add uh, the first button then duplicate it so you can just say uh, add and then here clear so once you do that now uh, we will come and select this three text fields let us first design this interface until it is something we can appreciate so first of all we will choose a font for this text fields And uh, uh, to me, I'll choose something not very professional, but uh, not so casual, like uh, book antica. And then uh, font can just stay at the team, uh, not, not much. And then after doing that, now come to the layout. I want to show you something. I uh, want to give every text field a margin of 20. Uh, Preferred width of about 300. Preferred height of about 35, uh, and you can see our interface is starting to appear well. Select the H box, come to the, the alignment uh, property, then alignment, select center. Now select the buttons that are in between, uh, that are inside the H box. Uh, once you select, come to the layout. Then now give this uh, by just double clicking the preferred width will be giving it uh, sorry 250 not to so 250 and then uh, the preferred height of about 100 and then uh, that's it and uh, we'll give it a margin of about five uh, on all sides so that's it and then now you can come and select this vbox uh, it's not the vbox actually the uncapping and let us resize this uncapping just in, uh, reduce the uh, the size now select the first text field now come to the properties and let us give this text field uh, some prom text and say enter your names that for the second text field uh, we'll put in some text and say 
enter your residence and for the text that text field will be asking for the phone uh, contact so enter your phone address your telephone number like uh, or you can just add for the mobile number enter your mobile number so uh, that's it for the three now let us come now to the code so because this is this other like the code is where uh, everything is just related to the backend so select the first text field now give it an id names names uh, come to the second text field uh, give this an id uh, residence and then uh, come to the third text field and uh, we will give this uh, an id mobile So now select the button add, come to this action, on action event and we will say add contract. So that's the name of our method, the method we want to declare. Be remember you can just declare this di uh, direct and give the artifact ML annotation uh, direct uh, and the code uh, in the controller or you can just type in the name of the method here like uh, the way I, I'm typing cancel. So what happens when you make the controller, if it doesn't find uh, that method in the controller, it will create it. But if it finds it, that under, it has an artifact an annotation, it will just retain it. So that's it. So after doing that now, save your uh, progress, resize this application, come here and uh, make the controller. So I just give it some time. So yes, uh, uh, this method uh, is no longer relevant again and uh, the label that we have deleted. So once you've done that, now we have three, three things here. So we'll be adding the contact. Direct, I'll just show you. So the first thing we will need is to get the string value of the name added. So uh, I just call this string names and uh, sorry and uh, I'll get it from the text field name, not get text into brackets. So that's it. Uh, oh, the text field was names. So I'll just give this name and the text field uh, names but get text. So uh, once you do that now, you can just copy it and uh, paste it uh, at least three, three times. So first of all, the name, the residence. So I'll just give it uh, uh, those variable names so here is the residence and the phone now the mobile that's what we called it so now now that we have that we'll have to check if these text fields are not empty so if name uh, is empty we want to validate and check that these three strings should not be empty. If name is empty, or just copy this and uh, short time. Uh, in between here, I'll just do this. So, if name is empty, or residence is empty, or phone is empty, now we'll give it some alert type of message so i'll type in an alert type of message so i'll create a new alert alert then uh, new alert uh here yeah. i'll type in the alert type i need so alert type uh, this is an, is an error miss uh, form of alert type then give this alert some header text and uh, we don't need an header text so I'll just say alert header uh, text none and then just copy this and paste and uh, we'll be changing the content text the content 
So the content inside the alert and here we'll put some string values uh, field required fields. Uh, I'll do some imports here and then I'll import the alert type. And uh, so once you do that now, uh, let us show this alert. Show show and wait so now we are good to go and then else meaning that everything is good so let us add this so the first thing i'll do uh, i'll create a, a string statement so i'll create a query so i'll write string query so into 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 quotes and now I'll keep, I'll type in my statement. I'll be using prepared statements to add some data. And then this is what I'll be saying. So insert into contact. The name of our table is contact. So insert into contact. Uh, into brackets here, type the, the, the columns uh, you want. So if we can remember, uh, the, our database, uh, our table, it was contact uh, the column for names where we'll be placing uh, our names, so its name. Uh, the column that we'll be placing our phone number is a phone, and the one is the other one is residence. So I'll just type in phone or residence. So once I've done that, uh, I'll type in uh, the values uh, into brackets. When using prepared statements, you don't type in the values direct you just put uh, three question marks uh, uh, if there are three uh, inputs that you have to place just put three uh, question marks and then here now we will be creating now a try catch error again so a try catch statement uh, scale exception uh, because we want to put some some, some SQL uh, queries so catch SQL and then into brackets here I'll type in uh, I'll, type, I'll just print out the message same out print uh, just ex so that's it and then now let me type in the message uh, here prepared statement I'll click it to prepare statement so prepared statement so you can call this prepared statement anything I cannot even call my name prepared statement I'll import this Java scale prepared statement and then here I'll call uh, the class of the uh, that holds the the prepared step. so here I'll call the class that holds the database so database under and I'll point out to the connection that I want it then I'll here I'll prepare a statement so prepare statement uh, string uh, the SQL so you just type in the SQL here uh, which is query if you can so this one is this query here and then now we we'll, it's time to set uh, the values you remember this quest three question marks now let us give you values so for the first one uh, we'll give it because all are expecting st string values as we had set uh, in the variable character so here the one the first one is the name so name i'll just copy this one save time and put the values for the next three strings so two uh, number two uh, residence number three Phone. So after doing that now, I think you're good to go. 
Uh, now, let us execute our stream. So here, you execute update. So once you've done that, uh, now you can give out some message. So let us import the Java SQL exception. Uh, now, I'll just type, copy this uh, alert and paste it here. Only that in this instance, I'll be changing the type of alert and I'll put information type of alert and I'll say uh, successfully added. And here, I need an, another alert uh, apart from the catch, uh, uh, apart from the catch, uh, laying out the message, the XQL exception message, I also put some error type here and say uh, operation fail, something like that. So operation fail. So the adding operation, uh, if it fails, this will be the message. So now I think we have everything in intact. And uh, if you have to cancel, meaning that we'll be clearing uh, both uh, three text fields. One will be name, it's set text uh, into brackets, then name, the residence. So this will first of all is names. The residence text field, let's set text. I know there are methods to sort out this, but uh, this tutorial just basics so uh, names the residence and then the next thing uh, we had a uh, mobile text field mobile upset text so uh, here we go uh, so we have uh, some items here uh, we are can clear and cancel let us build the application and see what we have today now that we can get an instance of the database class, we have taken the values from the text field. We have also checked if those text fields were not changed. Now we created a statement and we used prepared statements to add data into the, our, our database. So now that we have done that, we have built it successfully. Let us run the application. So here we go. So first of all, I'll type in my name. So I'll use my name as the first data. So I'll type in the residence I live in and then mobile number. So seven. So, so here we go. And then when you click add, it successfully added. But uh, so in future i'll show you how you can restrict uh, duplicate uh, addition of information but now i think you know how you can add information first of all we use the best way you use prepared statements i could encourage anyone don't try any form of adding unless it is safer prepared statements are safer they they avoid uh, injection uh, for sql injection there this is the remedy for sql injection so uh, that's how you can add data into the database table in an embedded uh, database using JDBC. So thank you for watching this video. Hope you learned something. Uh, you can just uh, double check this code, uh, this codes where we did everything, uh, the commands here, uh, the, how we can clear this text, and you can see if I could clear this, cancel this button, it clears everything, uh, and then. Here we get here we got the instance so you can just check out the previous tutorials and how to connect the database how to create a table now how to design the interface and add information to the database so in the next tutorial i'm going to be showing you how now we can view this table in a table view then i'll show you how to view this table if this data in a combo box then then we can go uh, and learn how we can update this information and then how can we delete this information? So just stay tuned in. So thank you for watching this video.